Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service this morning. Thank you for joining us. My name is Will Ruby, and I'm the minister of St. Martin's Church here in Heaton Norris in Stockport. This morning is a very special morning. It's our commemoration service for the 75th anniversary of VE Day. Uh, everything that you need for this service will come up on the screen, but if you'd like to download a service sheet, you'll be able to find one on our website as well. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. God has been our refuge and our strength, a present help in times of trouble. We come together on this day to commemorate the 75th anniversary of victory in Europe, when the sounds of war fell silent across this continent. We come together conscious of our own need of God's forgiveness for the sin and the desire to dominate others that leads to conflict between people and war between nations. And as we remember the many soldiers, sailors and airmen who gave their lives restraining evil and opposing tyranny, so we also come in thanksgiving for the years of peace that the nations of Europe have enjoyed since the Second World War. Let us pray that God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven, as we join our voices together and say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, today is a day of thankfulness to God for his mercies to us 75 years ago and also in the time since. And we're gonna sing a song that reminds one another of all that we have to be thankful to God for this morning. You can remain seated if you'd like as we sing together.
Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you that there is so much to praise you for this morning. Thank you that you are the King of heaven. Thank you that the whole of creation, the sun and the moon and all of time and space bow down before you. And yet thank you that you are father-like and you tend and spare us. And you gently bear us and rescue us from all our trouble. You are a great God who is so worth worshipping. Please help us to keep doing that no matter what comes our way. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Zechariah chapter 8 verses 3 to 8. This is what the Lord says. I will return to Zion and dwell in Jerusalem. Then Jerusalem will be called the city of truth and the mountain of the Lord Almighty will be called the holy mountain. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Once again, men and women of ripe old age will sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each with cane in hand because of his age. The city streets will be filled with boys and girls playing there. This is what the Lord Almighty says. It may seem marvellous to the remnant of this people at that time, but will it seem marvellous to me, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will save my people from the countries of the east and west. I will bring them back to live in Jerusalem. They will be my people and I will be faithful and righteous to them as their God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 16 to 21. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's say these words of response together. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other, that glory may dwell in our land. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. I'm going to say a few words from that passage that Rachel read out from Zechariah. I love hearing the stories of VE Day. Betty Mavis is 94 now. She was 20 years old during the war, living just outside Birmingham, working in a pencil factory, uh, making uh, bullets, in fact, rather than pencils. Uh, she uh, recalls uh, hiding in the air raid shelter at the bottom of her garden with her father looking out as the bombs fell, saying, golly, that one was close. On the morning of VE Day, she went to work just as normal. And then as work finished, she went down into the local town centre and the scene that unfolded before her eyes amazed her. Uh, people dancing and singing, bonfires being lit in the street, fireworks overhead, the pubs selling beer for 10p a pint. It was a massive street party uh, that had been laid on. In fact, she was saying one of her main memories was how light everything was. After years of blackouts, all the shop lights were on, the bonfires, the fireworks. In her memory, it was a picture of light. In fact, the more I've read about that first VE day, the more people come back to that one chief memory above all, the street party, the scene of the celebration and partying. Joan Johnson, uh, I was hearing about her just this morning. She's 99 now, and she met her future husband, George, 
as they danced together at the street party on VE Day. Uh, today, some people have very personal memories of VE Day. And today is a day that we can hear those stories again and remember them and be shaped by them. For many of us, for our generation, we don't have our own memories, of course, but we hear those stories again with an incredible debt of gratitude. I know that I'll never fully understand or appreciate the sacrifices that were made for us on our behalf. But the stories, hearing them again is so important because it's part of who we are. Uh, they're stories of remembrance, but they're also stories of hope. Reading from Zechariah just now shows that Betty's experience of VE Day was more than just an individual memory. It captures something of a universal longing. Zechariah paints the picture of all darkness coming to an end, of a community living in peace and safety and celebrating together with a street party. <laughs> Ze Zechariah is saying that the street parties of VE Day will one day happen again, but this time on a cosmic scale. Do you see it? Maybe if you've got it there, uh, you can see that, but maybe you can remember from when it was read. Zechariah paints this picture of old men and old women sitting on the side of the street, sitting in their chairs, watching, chatting, as a city full of boys and girls play on the street. It's a joyful, jubilant scene. Verse 6 says that it is marvellous. It's a wonderful scene of celebration and community together. The people who had experienced so much evil, both as victims and as perpetrators, were stepping out of darkness into a glorious light of celebration. Now in the first instance, Zechariah is talking about God's Old Testament people, and it's about their physical return to the city of Jerusalem. But there's a fuller realisation of this picture as well, this picture of the whole of humanity celebrating together in God's restored creation. Zechariah says that one day, all that is dark will be done away with. All that is evil will be conquered. All that hinders or harms or hurts will be banished. All the sin and selfishness and suffering will one day be redeemed. Now, as we read on through the rest of the Bible, we know that that is accomplished through Jesus Christ. Through his death on the cross, he is the one who will, as this verse says, will save his people. He will return one day and make all things new. And on that day, all his people will rest in safety, peace and hope. And the Bible says that they will celebrate together. It will be like a wonderful cosmic street party. And the best thing about this street party is that God himself will be there amongst the celebrations. You see it in verse 7. This is what the Lord Almighty said. I will save my people from the countries of the east and west. I will bring them back to live in Jerusalem. They will be my people and I will be faithful and righteous to them as their God. One day all things will be restored. It'll only be peace and safety and celebration. And it will go on forever. The ultimate street party. My in-laws both grew up in a village called Blacker Hill in South Yorkshire. And like so many other villages and towns, on VE Day itself, uh, they had a big street party uh, to celebrate. It was described as like a Barnsley football game in an FA Cup tie. It was that uh, significant and celebratory. Uh, after VE Day, 
uh, a little pamphlet, a letter was written to all the soldiers and the airmen uh, and uh, uh, those in the Navy who were still serving to tell them about the celebrations that took place in Blacker Hill and to encourage them uh, and to urge them to come home safely. Uh, and uh, I want to read to you a tiny bit at the end. This letter, this pamphlet finishes with what we've been thinking about, finishes with remembrance and thanks, but also looking forward in hope. Uh, it uh, describes, uh, thanks all the people who were involved with the celebrations that day and then says, but the best thanks of all goes to you in England, in Europe, the Middle East, the Far East, those on the sea who have left us so that Blacker Hill might be undamaged and free. Remembrance and thanks but also looking forward in hope, the last paragraph. We missed you. But this celebration was only a preparation for the great day when the world is at peace and you can join us. And then in capital letters, we are preparing. Remembrance and thanks and looking forward in hope to the great day when the world is at peace. Today, in the midst of the darkness of our current circumstances, this VE Day, we remember, we tell stories, we listen to stories, we give great thanks. But Zechariah also tells us to look forward in hope, to put our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, who will one day make all things new. One day all the darkness will be dispelled by light. One day all humanity will celebrate together in peace and safety. Zechariah says, can you imagine what the street party will be like on that day? Let's pray. God of glory, by the raising of your son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to continue with some uh, set prayers and the response, if you would like to join in, when I say, God, give peace, is God, give peace. Let's pray. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace for the servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. May God give peace. God give peace. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. May God give peace. God give peace. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family and friends, and all who pray for their safe return, may God give peace. God give peace. For civilian women, children and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror. Calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity. May God give peace. God give peace. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free. May God give peace. God give peace. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. May God give peace. God give peace. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. 
Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future. For you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing again uh, now, and it's a song based on Psalm 46. Those words we began our service with. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. A really apt and appropriate song for today in these circumstances. Let's sing together. On this VE Day, as we look back with remembrance and thanks and look forward in hope, we also uh, commit ourselves, recommit ourselves to serve those around us, particularly those who are in need. So let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and of our fellow men and women that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and the welfare of the nations. Let's say together. Lord God, our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit. Give us wisdom Give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. Let's pray. O oh Lord our God, as we remember, teach us the way of peace. As we treasure memories, teach us to hope. As we give thanks for the sacrifices of the past, Help us to make your future in this world until your kingdom comes. Amen. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle in the hearts of all people the true love of peace and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth that in tranquility your kingdom may go forward, 
till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth, and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour of your name and the good of your church and people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing one more final song. It's a song that picks up all we've been thinking about this morning, looking back in remembrance and looking forward in hope. Lord, for the years, your love has kept and guided. Let's sing together. pray this final prayer of blessing. God grants to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth and all people, peace and concord, and to us and to all your servants, life everlasting. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon us and remain with us always. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for this service on VE Day here at St Martin's in Heaton Norris in Stockport. Uh, we have our normal Sunday morning services are being broadcast online 
until we're allowed to meet together again. So please do join us on Sunday morning at 10.30 when our Sunday service will be available. There's more information about St. Martin's on our website and uh, the details you can uh, see there. Thank you for joining us this morning.